Okay, so we've just been talking about the uh, Human Genome Project and the 100k Genome Project for humans. Um, but let's not forget that there are other organisms that have been sequenced. So, um, I mean, you can go on to all sorts of sites and see. Um, I think some of the more notable ones, the chimpanzee, for obvious reasons, because it is our, uh, and they're always using this on tally, closest living relative. Um, so from sort of evolutionary and, you know, sort of finding out about humans and really we don't care about anything else. Um, purposes. Good one to do. It's terminally nosy, really. Um, but we have also done uh, the genomes, I think the plasmodium one they're doing at the moment. Um, which is a particular interest is the mosquito and the plasmodium parasite. So why are those so blinking important? So let's just go with the parasite first. This is the plasmodium parasite. Can't get the lid off the pen. It's a different colour. Uh, the plasmodium, I still can't do it. Never mind, I'll go back to black. Nope, can't do that one either. <laughs> help me, help me. No, I've got the orange one off, it's okay. Uh, the plasmodium parasite is a, a parasite that lives in the blood and it causes malaria. Now malaria is uh, still the biggest killer on the planet and to be honest I, I've got to say this n the most the, the recent interest in malaria because obviously it's found in uh, what you would call the poorer areas of the world is where it's sort of endemic and there's no reason why it wouldn't be in Britain um, you know it certainly wasn't round in Shakespeare's time Sir Andrew Ague cheek Ague was the malaria uh, we have certainly the right mosquitoes to carry malaria and um, I think every time I've been in London in summer there's been some alarmist article in the standard about you know malaria's on its way we've got the right mosquitoes we have got the right mosquitoes we don't have the plasmodium parasite as of yet um, but there's no reason why it couldn't spread the real reason that this is sort of you know come to the fore is tourism now you've got rich westerners going to malarial areas for their lovely holidays and then you know shoving off to far east asia and you know, uh, south america for their holidays and uh, they don't want to come back with malaria it's the bottom line so what's that got to do with mosquitoes Mos the mosquito is the vector that means it transfers the parasite so there are two sort of ways in which uh, it's proposed that you could control um, the spread of malaria and the incidence of malaria one is by sort of controlling your mosquito population so how do we control the mosquito population? We utilise its life cycle. So the uh, adult, no, I'm just going to apologise for the quality of my di diagram here. Uh, it's a bit big long abdomen, hasn't it? And uh, it's little legs. Um, don't know whether it's got antennae or not, don't much care. The mosquito adult has these sort of, you know, beautiful curving long back legs, doesn't it? And they tend to hang around on, on walls and then they uh, lay eggs. So they mate and they lay eggs. And where do they lay it? They lay it in stagnant water. When the eggs hatch, they turn into a, 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 a larva, which hangs around on the top of the water and gains its oxygen through its breathing tubes and then it sort of pupates and hatches so we can exploit its life cycle in various ways so we can do things like and these have been quite successful you can uh, drain water and um, so you don't have as much standing water, you can cover the water uh, either with a sort of, you know, a lid if you've got a, a 
tank or you can cover the surface with oil and that sort of attacks both of these stages of the, of the life cycle. You can uh, use fish as a predator and the adults we can use insecticides and uh, certainly DDT was the kind of the miracle insecticide of the 1940s and 50s and it did do a lot of good at re reducing mosquito populations. The problem with insecticides is that you get this uh, phenomenon called resistance. Now this is an evolution thing. So resistance arises through mutation. The non-resistant mosquitoes die and the alleles are passed to offspring. So it spreads really quickly. I don't know what the generation time of a mosquito is, but I'm imagining that's really quite, quite small. So we can control the mosquitoes, but we've got this problem of resistance. And, you know, obviously with the uh, adults who are going to be transferring it, the other way of controlling them is by mosquito nets. Mosquito nets are really, really important, but obviously they've got to be intact. Um, the other sort of angle of attack is to attack the parasite itself um, and you may have been on holiday to a malarial country where you have had to take anti-malarial drugs uh, both what I would call prophylactic which are the ones that prevent you uh, preventing drugs and ones to treat it uh, should you be unfortunate enough to come down with the symptoms. Um, and again, the big problem with this is that we've been using these for years now and we've got this resistance uh, building up. And again, this is the plasmodium parasite, gains the mutation, got killed by the drugs, uh, that allele then is, is passed on to the offspring. So the whole aim of mapping the genome of these two uh, organisms is to then try to exploit uh, their genome to make them more vulnerable to drugs. So what they're hoping for is that this will lead to better uh, drug treatment or control of mosquito populations. Again, if you want to do additional reading about this, uh, they're looking at using a technique called CRISP CRISPR, uh, which is a very fast way of isolating genes and, uh, and cutting them and replacing them with mutated versions of genes and they're using it using CRISPR genes to make uh, mosquitoes more vulnerable to uh, the CRISPR technique to make mosquitoes more vulnerable. So I just want to finish this by giving you a little website to look at which um, you think you'll find really useful for the ethics bit of this and of the genomes. It's called Your Genome Org. and it's a Welcome Institute one. Um, it has oh, hundreds of fact sheets, videos, summarising of ethical arguments, it's got stuff on about the mosquito, the plasmodium, the CRISPR technique. Um, I sort of surfed through it, spent about half an hour on it, picked out a few things that I thought might be useful and of interest. I don't think it'll take you any longer than that to do the same and then it might take you a bit longer to deal with the useful and interesting stuff.